Bwana asifiwe. Siku ya leo ni siku ya kipekee ambao Mungu ametenga ili tuweze kuwa na ushirika pamoja naye. Neno la Mungu katika Wafilipi 4:4 inasema kwamba tufurahi katika Bwana siku zote na tuweze kufurahi. So ninawakaribisha katika ibada ya leo nikisema tufurahi katika Bwana. Atakaye tusaidia katika kukalimani kwa ishara ni dada wetu Joyce Kurui. Ninawakaribisha nyote hata wala ambao mna tuangalia mkiwa nyumbani karibuni sana tuweze kuwa na ibada pamoja na tuombe Baba katika jina la Yesu Kristo ninakushukuru na kuinua Asante Jehovah kwa sababu ya nafasi hii siku ya leo ambao umetupatia siku ya kipekee ambao umetenga kwa ajili ya sisi tuweze kufurahi na kushangilia Baba tunakualika na tunaalika uwepo wako mahali hapa na roho wako mtakatifu akaweze kutuongoza. Katika ibada hii Bwana tumekuinua uwe Bwana juu ya kila jambo. Baba tunapoendelea kuwa pamoja nasi. Kila mipango ya kuzimu tunataka kutangazia kwamba imeshindwa na kwa sasa Jehova tunakualika uchukue mamlaka na uskani na ukatubariki ukakutane na mahitaji yetu yote siku ya leo. Asante kwa kipindi chote cha ibada hii ninaikabidhi mikononi mwako uweze kutawala na Mungu ukaweze kujidhihirisha kwa njia ya pekee katika jina la Yesu Kristo nimeomba nikishukuru amina so kwa wakati huu nataka nialike kwaya yetu ya Kiswahili ikaweze kutuongoza katika wimbo wa tenzi ambao unasema mwamba wenye imara karibu sana kwaya Yesu asifiwe asante sana kwa sababu ya wimbo huo wimbo wa baraka mwamba wenye imara. Kwa sasa nitawaalika wote ili tuweze kushiriki kwa pamoja e, imani ya mitume. Na muamini Mungu Baba Mwenyezi, Mumba wa mbingu na nchi na Yesu, na Yesu Kristo mwana wake wa pekee, Bwana wetu, aliyechukuliwa mimba kwa uwezo wa Roho Mtakatifu. Akazaliwa na Bikra Mariamu, akateswa zamani za Pontio Pilato, akasulubiwa 
akafa akazikwa akashuka mahali pa wafu siku ya tatu akafufuka akapaa mbinguni ameketi mkono wa kuume wa Mungu Baba Mwenyezi kutoka huko atakuja kwa hukumu walio hai na wafu na muamini Roho Mtakatifu kanisa takatifu lililo moja ushirika wa takatifu ondoleo la dhambi kiama ya mwili na uzima wa milele amina so wakati umewadia pia wa kuweza kukaribisha eh, Sunday school yetu iweze kuja na kupeana eh, presentation na baada ya hapo nitaalika Kiswahili kwaya waweze kuimba wimbo mmoja maalum na baada ya hapo watuongoze katika kusifu na kuabudu ambaye hatima ya hayo yote eh, kasisi wetu Reverend Samoe atakuja kutuongoza katika maombezi karibuni sana nataka nikaribishe sasa Sunday school karibu Good morning children this is your teacher teacher Helen I am so excited to be hosting you this morning I hope you have been keeping safe and wearing your masks. I know some of us have gone back to school, which is a good thing. While you are at school, please make sure to be wearing your masks and washing your hands. So today, we have a good story lined up for you, of our teachers, and I hope you are excited and ready to learn. Please sit back, relax, enjoy, and get to hear from God himself. Hello children, are you fine? I'm so excited to meet you this day for another day in Sunday school. So welcome. With me here are my friends. Hi friends. Hi. Hi. Are you okay? Yes. No. What happened Kiki? My friends laughed at <laughs> me. Oh no, don't laugh at your friends. That is not right. Close. Oh, I'm sorry. Please apologize. Sorry. sorry. Thank you. You should not laugh at your friends. I'm going to teach you today how to be good friends to our friends. Are we together? Yes. 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 We are going to learn a character from the Old Testament. Do you know what is Old Testament? Yes. yes. Old Testament comprises of that nine books, Genesis being the first book and Malachi being the last one. So I'm going to give you a riddle and tell me who is this character. Are you ready? Yes. yes. Point number one, I was born, I was anointed as a prophet before I was born. Number two, I was, I'm also known as a weeping prophet. I know, I know. And number three, I, came, I come from the tribe of Benjamin. Yes, together? Jeremiah. Very good children. Our character is Jeremiah. And our today's topic, topic is going to, is Jeremiah's best friend. Do we know the friend of Jeremiah, I'm going to tell you, relax. Okay. So, our reading comes from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 38, verse 1 to 3, and Jeremiah, chapter 39, verse 15 to 18. The Bible says, Jeremiah was prophet. He was prophesizing that the city of Babylon was going to the city was going to be destroyed by the Babylonians. He had prophesied that the Babylonians were going to kill everybody who was living in the city. But God also showed mercy by saying, whoever goes to Babylonians will live. He will escape with his life. He will live. So, Jeremiah, the officials who heard Jeremiah spoke, they were anchored. They were not ready to lose their city. So they went to the king and told the king, this man is speaking evil of our city. This man does not want the good for this city. This he is discouraging the soldiers and all the people who are left in this city. So this man should be put to death. The king replied, 
I cannot do anything to oppose you. You have all the right. So do anything with him. So they took a rope, they tied Jeremiah, and they put him into the cistern. Do we know what is a cistern, children? The cistern is a well dug to hold water. But this cistern had no water. It was just mud, it was cold, and very dark. So you can imagine how Jeremiah was feeling. Jeremiah sank into the mud. So a friend of Jeremiah named as Ebed-Melech, who was also working in the king's house, heard of the injustices that have been done to Jeremiah. He went to the king courageously. No one else was so courageous to go to the king. They were so afraid of him. He went and told the king, these people have acted so wickedly to the prophet of God, prophet Jeremiah. This time, the king heard him. The king was in the side of Jeremiah this time. He told him, take 30 men in this city and go and get him out of the system. So Jeremiah, so Abed-Melech went to the store. He got some old rags, some old clothes, and he let them down to Jeremiah. He told Jeremiah to tie some clothes and some old rags in his body so that the rope will not hurt him. Jeremiah did so. And they pulled him out. He was put into the custody, whereby he, left, he remained there until when the king called him. This act of bravery, Abed-Melech's bravery and fairness, is later rewarded. We are seeing this in Jeremiah chapter 39, verse 15 to 18, when God saved him. During the destruction of the city, when people were killed, his life was saved. God saved his life because he had trusted in him. God praised him for standing with the man of God, Jeremiah. Up to there, children, we've come to the end of the story. But now I want us to do a recap of our lesson. So children, what have we learned today from the story? Friends, what have we learned? Teacher, 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 teacher. Yes? True friendship. Very good. True friendship. I Number have two? About bravery. Yeah, bravery. We have learned about bravery. Good. And the last one? Teacher? Yes? I learned about the big whale. The big whale is known as? Centurion. No, it is Sistin. But that is a very good trial. So I'm going to give you some of my points. So, children at home, Note down these points, what we have learned today. Point number one, we should be good friends because it is rewarding to be a good friend. We are also seeing this in Abedmelech's story whereby he was so courageous and he went to the king. So number one is we should be good friends. Number two, God fulfills the promises. Yeah, that is seen in the story. He fulfilled by saving the life of Abed-Melech. He also fulfilled during the destruction of the city. And number three is that God can raise friends to his people when they least expect. He raised a friend of Jeremiah, that is Abed-Melech, when he was least expecting. So let's keep on trusting in God. Till there, I want to give Teacher Helen to conclude for us. All right. That was a very great story. And we want to thank uh, Teacher Felix for giving us a wonderful story about friends. Isn't that right? So I'm going to tell us today's memory verse, which comes from the book of Proverbs, chapter 17, verse 17, which says, a friend loves at all times. My friends, yes. Yes. are you ready for today's memory verse? Yes. Of course. Please repeat after me. Proverbs, chapter 17, verse 17. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 17. It says, it, it says, says, a friend 
A friend loves loves at all times. At all times. Proverbs chapter 17 verse 17. Proverbs chapter 17 verse 17. It's a very simple verse. I think you've already caught it, right? Yes. So let's say it together. Proverbs chapter 17 verse 17. It says, A friend loves at all times. Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 17, 17 verse 17. Yes, we should be good friends. We should be good friends to our friends. Love them at all times. Be there for them at all times. And do you know there's one person who is there with us all the time. Whether we are sad, whether we are happy, whether it's in the morning or at night, he is always there with us. Do you know who this friend is? You can find him at John chapter 15, verse 15, and that is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is our true friend. He is always there with us, no matter the season, no matter the time of the day. And we're going to sing this song, which talks about Jesus being our friend at all times. All right, are you ready for the song? Yes! yes. Sambamba. Jesus is my best friend, my best friend, my best friend. Jesus is my best friend, he's always there for me. Jesus is my best friend, my best friend, my best friend. Jesus is my best friend, he's always there for me. On Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Jesus is our best friend. Let us purpose to make him our best friend, and he's always go going to be there for us. So we've come to the end of today's session, and we hope you have learned something. We, ho we hope you've you have enjoyed today's session, and we'll see you again next Sunday, God willing. I'm going to ask Kiki to close with a word of prayer. Yeah, close your eyes, children. Let's pray. Our dear everlasting Father, we come before you this wonderful morning. We give you thanks and praise for enabling us to be in Sunday school today. Thank you for the teacher who has taught us about being a good friend. Uh, we thank you for Jesus is always our good friend. Thank you for my best friend too. I pray for others who are not here with us today. May they listen to the, uh, for the Sunday school. For I pray this believing and trusting in your Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Kiki. See you guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.
sana Wana wa Israeli Walimulie ya Musa Wana wa Israeli Walinugunika sana Wana wa Israeli Walimulie ya Musa Ewe Musa Bona tunateseka Ewe Musa Bona tunateseka Ewe Musa Bona tunateseka Ewe Musa Bona tunateseka Yes. 
wakati wa kumpa bwana sifa kwa watu wote kwa mataifa yote maana amekuwa mwaminifu ameendelea kutupigania ameendelea kusimama nasi so tumsifu yeye aliye uhai haleluya na mataifa yote pia wakamsifu bwana maana yeye ni mwaminifu itatangaza neno lake bwana
yetu wa mbinguni jina lake litukuzwe maana yeye ni mwaminifu na yeye ni mkuu wakati wote tumwabudu bwana kwa kuinua mikono yetu ishara ya kumwabudu ishara ya kumpa sifa ishara ya kusema yeye ni mwaminifu na hakuna mwingine aliye kama yeye katika jina la Yesu haleluya haleluya today as we pray we look unto the book of Samuel chapter 1 verse 16 and 17 and Eli said go in peace and may God of Israel grant you what you have asked of him we want to join together our prayer and ask the Lord and may the Lord grant you even those of us who are at home and those of us who are very far. Tunaomba Mungu akutana mahitaji yako katika neno la Bwana ambaye imesemwa katika Samueli wa kwanza mlango wa kwanza 17. Tuombe kwa imani. Baba katika jina la Yesu tunaombea wale wote wako nasi katika ibada hii Mungu wetu wa huruma. Waurumie Mungu na Bwana wetu kasikia maombi yao. Kama vile ulisikia ombi la Ana Bwana ukaweza hata kujibu hata nasi bwana tunakuja mbele yako kwa ujasiri kwa damu ya Kristo utusamee kila dhambi ambayo inaweza kuwa kikwazo kati yetu na wewe katika maombezi bwana wetu katutakaze ukatuhurumie bwana na kuturejesha katika nyumba yako tuweze kuona wema mungu naomba kwa ajili ya mafamilia wote ambao wanatusikiza na hata wale wameshiriki nasi mungu kutana na mahitaji yao katika utajiri wako ulio katika kristo yesu pigana baba vita vyao na hata mungu kawarejeshe kile kimenyanganywa na imeibwa na yule muofu tunaombea wale wagonjwa wapate kupona hata wale bwana wa 
wameambukizwa na hii covid 19 tunanena uponyaji juu yao kwa maana kwa mapigo yako Yesu tunaponywa baba wetu naleta baba mama mahitaji ya inji yetu Mungu nikiombea president na deputy na wale viongozi wote wa county governors wetu na viongozi wote Mungu wetu waweke roho wako mtakatifu waweze kuongozwa nawe ili waweze kufanya kazi yako jinsi unavyokusudia Mungu baba wetu tujalie viongozi wetu wakuwe wenye huruma na wenye kututakia mazuri na kutupangia mazuri baba uishe milele tunaomba tena kwa ajili ya uongozi wa kanisa tukileta baba viongozi wote mikononi mwako tukiombea presiding bishop wetu Abraham Mulwa pamoja na wale wote ambao wanaongoza pamoja na bishop wetu Luka Mayo na hata viongozi kanisani Mungu tunanena uponyaji juu ya maisha yao na hata uongozi wao naomba hata walimu wa Sunday school Mungu wetu wajalie kila kitu kizuri ili waweze kulea hawa watoto wetu katika njia ya kukuheshimu ili wafanikiwe Mungu asante kwa ajili unatujali pamoja na haya baba kwa ibada hii naomba mnenaji wa siku ya leo ukamtumia kama chombo chako ya baraka. Asante Mungu kwa ajili ya mengi mazuri ambayo umetupangia Bwana. Tunaomba Bwana ukaongoze hata wale wote ambao wako katika hali ambao wanahitaji maombi, kutana mahitaji yao kwa maana we ni mwema Mungu na warehema. Maana tumeomba katika jina la Yesu, ulio Kristo na Bwana wetu. Amen. Sasa wakati huu tunashukuru Mwenyezi Mungu kwa ninyi wote ambao mmeungana nasi katika ibada hii kwamba wakati huu tunataka kuweza kumega neno la uzima na siku ya leo tumebarikiwa kuwa na mchungaji wetu Reverend David Nganga na ninamkaribisha katika jina la Yesu karibu nena na watu wa Mungu na Mungu akutumie kama chombo cha paraka barikiweni sana asante Yeah thank you so much uh, uh, Reverend Samoe may God bless you I want to take this opportunity to greet all of you who are watching us following us live those who are watching us through BHB and our members who are in our worship service I greet you in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and I am happy this morning to share with you the word of God which I'm picking from uh, Acts chapter 16 reading from verse number 20 5 to verse number 31 uh, thank you so much if you are there i will read acts chapter 16 verse 25 to verse 31 uh, the bible says about midnight paul and silas were praying and singing hymns to god and the other prisoners were listening to them Suddenly there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. At once all the prison doors flew open and everyone's chains came loose. The jailer woke up and when he saw the prison gate doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted, "Don't harm yourself." We are all here. The jailer called for lights, rushed in and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. He then brought them out and asked, "Sirs, what must I do to be saved?" They replied, "Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved you and your household." May God bless his word this morning now if you have been following closely you will realize that we have had a theme as a church and we are talking about scaling the heights to spiritual maturity in other words we are talking to ourselves as a congregation telling ourselves that we need to mature spiritually so that we are not tossed back and forth by every kind of doctrine and the lord has walked with us from the beginning of the year january you know february to where we are today we started by surrendering to god uh and then we went into uh service and now we are under settling down 
And that is why this particular moment we want to talk about recognizing the power of the Lord in settling down. So we want to share from the, the book of Acts and ask ourselves a number of questions including how can one recognize the power of God? How can one be able to see God at work? And the word power as is used in the scriptures from the original Greek word is the word dunamis. Dunamis basically means absolute authority. And that is where we get the English word dynamic. That's where we get the English word dynamo. They have the root word from the Greek word dunamis. And then when we are talking about the power of God, we can say dunamis of God, absolute authority. And that is why, that's what we want to interact with this particular moment. There are so many people who hear these things as stories. When somebody says, I have seen the power of God. I have seen God working. I have seen God having done something. There are people who ask themselves, what is all this thing about the power of God? And that is why this morning I will read the story of Paul and Silas in the, in the book of Acts chapter 16. Because the book of Acts chapter 16 discusses the ministry of Apostle Paul in the region of Macedonia. Macedonia was like a province. Macedonia was like a state. Macedonia was like a district, so to speak, which had other cities within it. There are major cities or towns that were in the province of Macedonia. They included Amphipolis, Apollonia, Neapolis, Berea, Thessalonica, and also Philippi or Philippi. And so this particular passage which we are reading, these events took place in Philippi, which was in the region of Macedonia. And the story is very common, especially to people who are brought up in a, uh, from a, a church background. You realize the story of Paul and Silas. That you know they had just responded to the Macedonian call in Acts chapter 16 and verse 9. In the course of their ministry, Paul and his team, they reached a place called Troas in Acts chapter 16 and verse number 9. And there was the Macedonian call. There was a vision of a man from Macedonia calling them saying, come to us and bring the good news to us. And so as they responded to the Macedonian call, they reached the area of Philippi. And there in Philippi, and these things you can read in the preceding verses, there was a woman who, there was a lady who was uh, gaining her wages through fortune telling. And when they came and replaced her narrative with the issues about believing in Christ, it landed them into pro problems. And that is why where we are reading in verse number 25, they are now in a prison in Macedonia in the city of Philippi. And then these are the events that took place. The Bible says in verse number 25, about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And the other prisoners were listening to them. Now they have been taken, thrown into prison. And if you like to see the clear picture of how things happened is in verse number 22. The Bible says the crowd joined in the attack against Paul and Silas. And the magistrates ordered them to be stripped and beaten with rods. After they had been severely flogged, they were thrown into prison. And the jailer was commanded to guard them carefully. When he received these orders, he put them in the inner cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. So when the crowd attacked Paul and Silas, and the magistrate ordered them to be stripped and beaten with rods. Then they were severely flogged and thrown into prison. And when the jailer received orders of how to contain them, he put them in the inner cell 
and fastened their feet with stocks. I don't know how you can picture that, but I am trying to imagine a scenario in the Roman prison or in the Roman jail. It was a very, very pathetic situation. A situation that where one would say, where are you, God? We are preaching your word. And here we are, having been stripped naked, having been beaten up, having been flogged, and now thrown into prison. And if, even while in jail, we have been put in the inner cells, and our feet are, you know, uh, and, you know are tied with some stalks. And so that was the scenario. And I want to imagine that even you and I, there are sometimes you find yourself in situations where you ask yourself, where is God? How can I see the power of God? Who are these people who have seen the power of God? I want to share with you some insight from the word of God. And begin by saying, one will never recognize the power of God until they have the following. And I want to use the story of Paul and Silas to lift up a few things that you and I must have if we are going to see or recognize the power of God. Verse 25 carries two points that I want to share with you before I go to the third point. Verse 25 says, About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. I want you to picture that. They are in prison because of preaching. They are in jail, jail because of preaching. But then, at midnight, when you are supposed to just sleep and relax, because you have been stripped naked, you have been beaten up, you have been flogged, and now you are in prison, at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying, Paul and Silas were singing hymns and the other prisoners were listening to them. I don't know what you make out of that, but I want to say this. For you to see the power of Christ, the power of God at work, number one, you must have passion for Christ. You must have passion for Christ. Passion is seen in these people in that... At midnight, Paul and Silas are praying. At midnight, Paul and Silas are singing hymns to God. And because they had passion for Christ, they loved the Lord, the other prisoners were just watching them. So my brothers and my sisters, you keep asking, how can I see the power of Christ? For you to see the power of God, you must have passion for Christ. And where does this passion begin? This passion begins by having a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Having a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. There are so many people who want to see the power of God, yet they do not have an intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. Where does it begin? It begins with John 14, 6. Jesus Christ talking to Thomas, he said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody comes to the Father except by me. Brothers and sisters, you and I must be born again. You must have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Now, I am talking about the area of Macedonia. And when Apostle Paul is talking to the Philippians later on, in Second, Phil, uh, not Philippians, but as he's talking about talking to the Corinthians later on in Second Corinthians, chapter eight and verse number one to five, he tells them, "I am amazed at the grace of God that was in the churches of Macedonia, for they gave them they gave beyond what we expected of them." But in verse number 5, which is key, he says, But one thing that they did, before they gave their things, they first of all gave their lives to the Lord before they gave to the ministry. Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, 
You may be in the church for many years. You may be knowing so many things about the church. But you will never see the power of God until you have a personal relationship with him. Until you have a personal relationship with him. And that's what I'm calling passion for Christ. It's only people who are passionate that they see what God is doing. And it's very serious when we talk about personal relationship with God. You could be in the U.S., you could be in Europe, you could be in Australia, you could be here in Africa, you could even be here in Kenya. The principle doesn't change. I remember the words of Dr. Ravi Zacharias. Dr. Ravi Zacharias was a renowned apologist who died on 19th May last year, 20, uh, I mean last year, I mean died on 19th May, just the other day. Dr. Ravi Zacharias once said, referring to life after this life, and he said, one of the saddest statements that somebody would want to hear is when they have appeared before Christ and Christ tells them, get away from here, I did not know you. And then somebody will say, but Lord, I was in the church. He says, no, get away from here. I did not know you. But Lord, I gave my money to the church. Get away from here. I did not know you. But Lord, I was singing in the choir. I was teaching the Sunday school. I was in the missions department. The Lord will say, no, get away from here. I did not know you. That statement by Dr. Ravi Zacharias basically meant that you might have done so many things in the church, even for the church, but the mere fact that you did not have Jesus as your personal savior, that statement will echo in your mind according to Dr. Ravi Zacharias as you proceed to the lake of fire. I pray that doesn't happen that way. Now in the same, same verse number 25, about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And the other prisoners were watching. I have said the first thing that will cause one to see the power of God is when one has passion for Christ. The second thing is when one has praises for Christ. Remember, they were singing, praying, and singing hymns to the Lord. When you praise the Lord... You literally put God where he's supposed to be, high and exalted. And while he's up there, he will then perform his miracles. In Psalm number 22 and verse 3, the Bible says, God inhabits the praises of his people. That God dwells where he is being praised. And when he is being praised, and when he is there, Definitely his presence, his power will be realized. Putting God where he belongs, lifting him up on high, he will then perform miracles and his power will be seen. These people are singing praises to God, hymns to God. And then verse 26, suddenly there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prisons were shaken. At once, all the prison doors flew open. Everyone's chain came loose. As a result of praising God, as a result of lifting God, when we lift God, then God will demonstrate his power in our very own eyes. So number one, brothers, pardon for Christ. Number two, brothers, praises for Christ. My sister, when you have passion for Christ, you will see God at work. When you have praises for Christ, you will see God working. And then fast forward the story. When the jailer realized that the doors were open, he wanted to kill himself. But Paul and Silas told him, no, 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 we are around. Nobody has escaped. In verse number 29, the jailer called for lights, rushed in and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. He then brought them out and asked them, Sirs, 
what must I do to be saved? Verse 31, they replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. What are we saying this particular moment? We are saying that if you want to see the power of God, number one, you must have passion for Christ and then you see what Christ does. Number two, you must have praises for Christ, lifting him up. And then you will see him demonstrating his powers. And number three, when you are preaching Christ, you will see the power of God at work. When these people talked to the jailer, they told him, no, our business is one, and I'm paraphrasing. Our business is one. It's just to preach Christ. And that is why in the book of Mark chapter 16 and verse number 17, the Bible says, in my name, they will cast out demons. They shall speak also in new tongues. What are we saying, my friends? We are saying that God is powerful. We are saying God is omnipotent. We are saying that for us to see his power, let us preach Christ. And when we preach Christ, the Bible says, in my name, they will cast out demons. There are many people who have never seen the demonstration of the power of God. Let me remind you this particular moment that the power of God is seen even when we are preaching. We preach and God demonstrates his power. We preach and God delivers his people. We preach and God shows that his word does not go out in vain. Friends, passion for Christ will cause us to see the power of God. Praises for Christ will cause us to see his power at work. Preaching Christ, that preaching will make Christ demonstrate his powers. But then, how can you do all these things, yet you do not have a personal relationship with Jesus. I want to invite you, my friend, to examine yourself even as I examine mine. And ask yourself, if Jesus Christ was to come today, would your name be found in the Lamb's book of life? John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am not talking about being born in a Christian family. No, no, no. I'm not talking about being a child of a pastor. No, 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 no. I'm not talking about being in a big church. No, 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 no. I'm not talking about giving money to the church. No, 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 no. I'm not talking about supporting missionaries. No, no, no. I'm talking about you as an individual having a relationship with Jesus Christ. That when that time comes, he will look at you straight in the eyes and say, welcome my faithful servant inherit the kingdom which your father prepared for you. And not, as Dr. Ravi Zacharias once said, that he will say, get out of here. I did not know you. Then wh what do we need to do then? I want to invite you to give your life to Jesus. It is as simple as accepting that I am a sinner and Christ died for my sins. And then you believe with your heart and confess with your mouth that Christ is Lord and your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. I want to pray with you. Could you be there this particular moment and you are saying, Preacher, I know my life. Preacher, I know my life. Preacher, I need to surrender my life to Jesus. You can raise up your hand wherever you are by faith and I will pray with you. Let's pray. Everlasting God, we thank you. We thank you for what you did on the cross. Christ, you died, demonstrating your love for us. There could be a friend of mine, my sister, my brother, who's been in the church for many years, giving money, participating in ministry, yet, Lord, they have not given their lives to you. And today they are making a commitment to start a new life in Christ Jesus by surrendering their lives to you. I pray the Lord you would accept them, forgive their sins, 
and write their names in the Lamb's book of life. So that eventually, my Father and my God, we may see your power because of having passion for Christ, because of having praises for Christ, and because of preaching Christ to our people. Be thou glorified, because we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. May God bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you so much. Tunashukuru Mungu kwa sababu ya neno ambao tumeweza kupokea. E, mungu ametutenda mema na ninatumai kila mmoja ameweza kupokea sehemu yake. Na tunashukuru Mungu kwa sababu ya kutuhudumia kwa njia ya kipekee. Sasa imewadia wakati ambapo ninawalika tuweze kushiriki pamoja katika kutoa sadaka na zaka zetu. Na paybill namba yetu iko hapo chini. E, utatumia kama unatumia Mpesa kuna paybill namba yetu ina run hapo kwa screen yako kwa hivyo tutoe kwa ukarimu kwa sababu Mungu anapenda watu ambao ni wakarimu tunaendelea kuatia moyo ya kwamba tuzidi kuendelea katika BS zetu na pia katika maombi kwa hivyo e, tunamaliza ibada kwa kuomba na tuombe Baba katika jina la Yesu Kristo na kushukuru na kuinua Asante Jehova kwa wema na fadhili zako ambazo ni za milele. Tunashukuru Mungu kwa sababu ya wapendwa ambao wamekusikiliza na wamekutazama kupitia kwa runinga zao. Ninajua wengi wana mahitaji mengi ambao Mungu angependa ukutane nayo. Ninaomba Mungu kwa wale ambao wanataka uokovu wakapokee katika jina la Yesu. Ninaomba wale ambao wana mahitaji tofauti Mungu kaweze kukutana nao kwa sababu hata kabla hatujasema Mungu unajua kilicho ndani ya mioyo yetu. Kutana na kila hitaji Jehova kwa sababu we ni Mungu ambaye unaona kwa siri na hata unajibu kwa wazi. Pokea sifa, pokea utukufu Bwana. Watu wako watakapoenda katika wiki, tunawakabidhi mikononi mwako uweze kuwabariki, kuwaongoza na kukuwa pamoja nao kila wakati. Mungu pokea sifa kwa sababu wewe ndio Mungu wetu na Baba yetu. Katika jina la Yesu Kristo nimeomba nikishukuru. Na pia ningependa kusema kwamba kina mama tuna mkutano wetu kongamano letu la kila mwaka. So ninawakaribisha nyote tarehe 23 na tarehe 24. Karibuni sana tuweze kumega mkate pamoja. Na basi karibuni katika neema. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.